Sideshow is the first episode that was produced for Batman the Animated Series Season 2. While it was the second episode to air, dated May 3rd, 1994, it has the distinction of being the season premiere on the Blu-ray set. I know Mask of the Phantasm came out in December of 93, in between seasons 1 and 2, but we will discuss that film in full detail at a later date. Ruled sane and guilty of his crimes, Killer Croc is being transported by train to a prison outside of Gotham. In the middle of the ride, Croc uses his jaws to break his chains and escape the locomotive, but not before being shot with a tranquilizer dart. Luckily, Batman is on board under the disguise of a reporter and faces off against the criminal on top of the moving train cars. After a brief battle, they fall into the rocky wilderness where Croc flees from the Dark Knight while suffering the effects of the sedative in his system. Eventually, he gives Batman the slip, but groggily trips into a river and down a waterfall. Unconscious under the rapids, he's saved by a boy with flippers for hands and feet named Billy and brought back to a remote property owned by a small group of retired circus performers. While in their care, Croc is treated as one of their own, but with Batman still out there looking for him, the fugitive juggles with what his next move will be. The episode was loosely based on a story in Detective Comics number 410 from 1971 called A Vow from the Grave. That issue was written and drawn by the legendary team of Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. Sideshow isn't an exact copy and really only uses the setting and a few characters from the comic prominently. Killer Croc isn't even in the book at all. However, the character known as Billy in the episode became a recurring player in the comics. There, he's known as Eddie Deacon, aka Flippy, and he's appeared in DCU stories as recently as the 2010s. Sideshow was directed by Boyd Kirkland, a good choice for the beginning of a new set of episodes. The story credit went to Michael Reeves and the teleplay was also written by Reeves and the returning Bryn Stevens. Reeves was often involved in some high quality scripts for this show and I've sung Stevens' praises on more than one occasion. She only wrote five episodes but with Heart of Steel and Birds of a Feather already in her rear view at this point, Sideshow was yet another impressive installment to add to her credentials. Once again, the animation services were provided by the Dong Yang Company, with the layouts performed by Spectrum. Unfortunately, this was the last episode that Spectrum had any involvement in. While they did work on Mask of the Phantasm just before this, they closed their doors for good soon after. Their legacy is well preserved through Heart of Ice, Beware the Grey Ghost, On Leather Wings, and a few other classics. They were responsible for some of the best animation the series ever saw, and their work is finally remembered among fans and the crew of Batman the Animated Series. Sideshow is a pretty nice looking episode. It all takes place outside of Gotham in mostly brightly lit outdoor areas. While it is a bit of a shock to the system to see an entire story play out without Gotham's shadowy embrace, it turned out to be a welcomed change of visual pace, and it stands out for that reason among others. One of my favorite sequences sees Batman falling down a massive canyon. He loses his grappling hook among the plummeting tree and boulders, leaving him clinging to a ledge. A good looking and exciting piece of animation. Of course, there are a few mistakes, like Killer Croc's eyes changing colors a few times, but it's forgivable. Now, before I get into what I thought of Croc's characterization here, I need to address this. <sighs> I threw a rock at him! It was a big rock. Flawless. So there's actually a lot of heart in this story, and to take a character like Croc and almost give him a conscience is no easy task. We've heard from other creators on this show that Bryn Stevens was known for that kind of thing in her scripts, so I think it's fair to give some of that credit to her. Croc never really changes his personality, but you can see sympathy starting to creep in, especially when talking to Billy. There's a moment in the middle of the night where he's about to steal the group's nest egg of $50,000, but starts to feel bad about it before he's spotted by the kid. I know you feel a little funny being here, but it's great. It really is. You can be yourself. Yeah, great. Whatever. It's fairly clear that no one's ever been nice to Croc before, and he doesn't know how to handle it. Was the Killer Croc character beyond redemption? Could he have changed? Particularly considering he was around people who were comparably ridiculed, who knows how things would have gone down if Batman never found him. 
Spoilers ahead for the finish of the episode. After Croc is shown being paranoid of the bat showing up a few times, the vigilante does end up tracking down the criminal. The resulting fight sees Batman thrown in a cage as he tries to convince the circus performers of the killer's true nature. After he tries murdering Batman, Croc's newfound friends turn on him, and he's forced to lock them in a separate cage. Soon enough, it becomes an all-out battle to apprehend Croc, which finishes after the fugitive is knocked out on the mill wheel. Authorities arrive some time later and lock the criminal in a straitjacket and mask, preventing him from using his jaws. One last conversation with Billy reminds us of what could have been. Why, Croc? Why'd you turn on us like that? We could have helped you. You said you couldn't be yourself out here, remember? Well, I guess that's what I was doing, being myself. This was really good, and a surprising, nearly sympathetic turn from Killer Croc. Aaron Kincaid did a solid job with the dialogue. Just a hint of the character questioning himself is all that was needed. Also, we got this moment that made me like everything more. Give it up, Bats. You can't take me. I got the high ground. It's over, Anakin. I can't finish this video without making a quick mention of Brad Garrett as Goliath. And I'm Goliath. I helped haul you in. It was his only appearance in this show, but he would go on to voice a few characters, most notably Lobo, on Superman the Animated Series and one episode of Justice League. Other than that, I'll just say this was a very strong, very different episode for Croc and the series as a whole. Loved the setting and climax, but my favorite thing about it was the character work. Make Sideshow your main attraction next time you want to watch a story featuring Batman's reptilian nemesis.